of America is always safer in the hands of the people than in the conference rooms of any elite. Sam Cedar. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. We must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. <laughs> Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? It is, it is Thursday, October 31, 2019. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal, the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, Dr. Lewis Fleischman, on the failed dynamic scoring and why we should be using the first scenario from the Social Security trustees as opposed to the second one. Also on the program today, White House lawyer moved the Ukraine call transcript to a super secret server in the wake of Colonel Vinland's scrutiny. Also, top Russian NSC official to testify today and to quit tomorrow. Democrats to hold an unnecessary vote to formalize impeachment. And Trump cranks up fundraising for vocal anti-impeachment Republican senators. Meanwhile, Twitter bans all political ads. Republicans stop the Senate Democratic effort to halt Trump's attacks on the ACA. This in the wake of a report that 400,000 children have lost their health care since 2016. And finally, the ABA's ranking of a Trump judicial nominee brings him to tears. All this and more on today's program. Uh, yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Happy Halloween uh, to all of you. Uh, we are um, we are sans Jamie and uh, Michael uh, today, but uh, Brendan and Matt are here. Um, this is what we're starting folks. to call the the, the uh, foundational crew, the skeleton well, crew. Well, yeah, right? it's a spooky skeleton cr- crew Halloween. Ah, yeah, that's appropriate. Very yeah. well done. Uh, very well done. Uh, but we will uh, endeavor to persevere. Um, let's go uh, first to uh, this clip, which I found um, rather stunning. Here's a, a guy who, w- w- if you ever need to describe the concept of, oh, and I should say, uh, first off, before we get to the clip, a reminder um, follow us on Instagram. We are now uh, well over 10,000 followers. We want to get to 20,000 followers. But we'll start first with 11,000 followers. So uh, follow us on Instagram. Also, don't forget, AM Quickie is live. You can go subscribe to it via amquickie.com. Uh, or you can do it uh, via the app at majorityapp.com. All right. So if anybody ever asks you, what does it mean to have a, a total lack of self-awareness? and you don't feel like describing it in words, I would point you to this very clip. Imagine, look at how the media protects Joe Biden. Joe Biden's on tape in a quid pro quo. Pause Either it for one second. This fire- is, uh, I should say, this is Sean Hannity with Donald Trump Jr. Go ahead. Joe Biden. Joe Biden's on tape in a quid pro quo. Either you fire him in six hours or you're not getting the billion dollars. That. Fire him, you get the billion dollars. Quid pro quo. Then you got, do you know anything about Ukraine? No. Anything about energy? Nope. Oil? Nope. Gas? Nope. Millions of dollars. Oh, that was the guy that Joe demanded to be fired. Imagine if that was, your name was Hunter Biden. 
except Hunter's oh, I, I wish my name was Hunter Biden. I could go abroad, make millions off of my father's Everywhere. presidency. I'd be a really rich guy. It would be incredible. But because my name is Trump, if I took one point five dollars from China, not one point five billion like Hunter, but one point five dollars, their heads would explode. Oh. <laughs> um. Donald Trump Jr., I mean, they have been uh, raking in money uh, via their properties. Remember, like, wasn't Donald Trump Jr. supposed to be the guy who is um, running his businesses? Was it Eric only? Are you sure? What is Donald Trump Jr. doing now? Nothing? Is he an ofi- a government official? Campaign. He's just working on the campaign? He's just being paid by the campaign. Yeah. He's just using his father to rake millions of dollars in and, and getting it uh, paid to him via the campaign. I mean, it is, Wikipedia says he's a business person, so. Oh, he's a business person. Well, there you go. He's not trading. Donald Trump Jr. is not in any way trading off his dad's name, which was Donald Trump. Um, he's the executive vice president of the Trump Organization. Now, wait a second. What is this? Let's go back. I just want to listen to one thing because I think you said something about his head, his dad's head exploding. Go mi- middle, midway through. Oh, that was the guy that Joe demanded to be fired. Yeah. Imagine if that was your name was Hunter Biden. Except oh, I, I wish my name, name was Hunter Biden. I could go abroad, make millions off of my father's Everywhere. presidency. I'd be a really rich guy. It would be incredible. You are a really rich guy. Because my name is Trump, if I took $1.5 from China, not 1.5 billion like Hunter, but 1.5 dollars, their heads Pause would it. Wait explode. A second. Is he saying that Hunter Biden took 1.5 billion dollars from China? Is Hunter Biden a billionaire? He's better at scamming than we thought. Guys. That's pretty yeah, good. Nice work. All right, go back. I just wanted to. I. I there's a a sallow look to uh, Donald Trump's face that I've seen before back in my uh, Hollywood days when there was a. Uh, you you would find that with actors who are having a bit of a problem. But uh, my name is Trump. If I took one point five dollars from China, not one point five billion like Hunter, but one point five dollars, their heads would explode. So I don't get it. Uh, but um, uh, there he is. Uh, there is Donald Trump Jr. Um, showing the world what it means to have absolutely no self awareness whatsoever. Um, folks, oh, shoot, do you have those sneakers over there? I want to show them off. Um, Karyuma sneakers, they marry old school designs with new school ethics. I think they should be on my chair, aren't they? Right there? Aren't they? Here we go. Yeah. Um, these shoes are awesome. Here, bring them over to me. I've been trying to, don't go that way. Okay. Oh, geez. Here we go. Um, these are like old school uh, style snakes, but they are shoes that are made responsibly, feel crazy comfortable, and they uh, provide, as you see, effortless style. That's why they make their sneakers by hand with premium natural materials. Uh, they have canvas, which is made from cotton sourced via fair trade initiatives. They have this cleaner premium leather, which is made with water that's been reused and treated. That means that uh, zero chemical waste output. Their outsole is even made of natural raw rubber. I can't believe I'm touching this. This has gone on like New York City (laughs) streets. Um, Plus, their shipping footprint balance is zero, which is amazing considering they ship worldwide and here in the USA. They even have express shipping and they can deliver your shoes in just two to three business days. Then if any reason they don't fit properly, you can return them free of charge. Um, So basically the way that uh, my mornings usually work if I'm with the kids is I get up and I get dressed and I make breakfast Mila, as she walks out the door, critiques what I'm wearing. And honestly, the first day that I had these on, she was just like, who told you to get those? I'm like, well, they, they, they're advertising on the show. She's like, those are cool. Boom. I achieved some measure of style. Uh, and 
And I hope she cares about the fact that it's uh, made responsibly. Uh, but um, I don't know if she does, but they look very cool. And this is a big upgrade for me. So for a limited time, our listeners can get an exclusive 15% off your first pair of Cariuma sneakers. Go to Cariuma, C-A-R-I-U-M-A dot com slash majority. Get 15% off. That's C-A-R-I-U-M-A dot com slash majority for 15% off today. Folks, I can tell you also as a small business owner, the hardest thing that I deal with is legacy systems that we had on our membership, integrating it with new systems that we have, vice versa, all different sort of siloed. Uh, like I didn't even realize what, what, what people were talking about when they would say these words. Um, until I actually started doing this stuff. And it's the problem that keeps so many businesses from knowing their numbers, of course, is their hodgepodge of business systems. They have one system for accounting, another for sales, another for inventory, and so on. It's just a big inefficient mess that takes too much time and too many resources, and that hurts the bottom line. Well, introducing NetSuite. It's by Oracle, the business management software that handles every aspect of your business in an easy-to-use cloud platform and gives you the visibility and control you need to grow. With NetSuite, you save time, you save money, and you save unneeded headaches. You can manage your sales, you can fi manage your finance, your accounting, orders, and HR instantly right from your desktop or your phone. That's why NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Right now, NetSuite is offering you valuable insights with a free guide, Seven Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits. It's probably where Michael is right now, reading that, uh, that thing at netsuite.com slash majority. NetSuite.com slash majority. That's NetSuite.com slash majority to download your free guide, Seven Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits. NetSuite.com slash majority. Pick it up now. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, wait a second. Um, don't, Brendan, what are you doing? Were you, Brendan, stop. <laughs> Dude. I understand. Uh, Halloween, you're hungry. Stop chewing on the uh, the cables because if you do that, um, we're going to get some type of like uh, short circuit. And then, oh, oh God. And, and then, oh no, what? <laughs> we're going to get a short circuit and it's going to be one of those ridiculous Halloween shows again. Oh, hungry. damn it. Damn.
Okay, it's 20 past the hour, and uh, we are live from the uh, Jenny Craig uh, Studios. It's the crown prince of the fourth wave of right-wing talkers coming to you live from uh, downtown Stoughton. And it is uh, the Ken 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 Show. I'm the Deuce here with Scott So, the Dork, and of course, uh, Gabe Brendan is here, our intern. Uh, so let's go over... This guy is an American hero, okay? Can you imagine your dad is under assault and you've got to go out there every day. You have worked for every single bit of every single thing that you have ever earned in your entire life. And your dad uh, wasn't going to give you a handout because he was a businessman. And, uh, however... You are subjected to watching your dad be persecuted because of a bad deed from somebody else. This is uh, the great Donald Trump Jr. Um, and uh, he's on with uh, the great American patriot, Sean Hannity. Imagine, look at how the media protects Joe Biden. Joe Biden's on tape in a quid pro quo. Either you fire him in six hours or you're not getting the billion dollars. That. Fire him, you get the billion dollars. Quid yeah. pro quo. Then you got, do you know anything about Ukraine? No. Anything about energy? Nope. Oil? Nope. Gas? Nope. Millions of dollars. Oh, that was the guy that Joe demanded to be fired. Yeah. Imagine if that was, your name was Hunter Biden. Except oh, I, I wish my name. name was Hunter Biden. I could go abroad, make millions off of my father's Everywhere. presidency. I'd be a really rich guy. It would be incredible. But because my name is Trump, if I took $1.5 from China, not $1.5 billion like Hunter, but $1.5, their heads would explode. Now, okay, now, of course, uh, you know, Hunter Biden's dad was vice president. And uh, so he went over. So when he said, like, if my dad was president, he was actually, that was a misspoke. But uh, everything else, I mean, here's a guy who uh, has to stand by and watch Hunter Biden lot up his pockets. Uh, no one talks about the fact that Hunter Biden is literally a billionaire. That's another thing that you won't hear in the fake news. In nope. Chinese currency. And he's got friggin' UN, UN or whatever dropping out of his pockets and meanwhile they need to persecute the trump family because they hate this country and what were founded upon it's true uh folks don't forget promotional support for today's show is from the good people at patriot fencing on route 27 in stoughton protect your family from the hordes of immigrants with a new beautiful and equally durable composite fence uh from patriot fencing Go to keepoutthehordes.com, use the coupon code the deuce, and uh, you will save 15% on one of those beautiful Keep Out the Hordes fences from Patriot Fencing. Um, Trump cannot reverse in three years what Obama did for eight. Protect your family. So, all right, do we have, should we do this uh, first? Let's do um, uh, this weekend, I went out and uh, did one of my uh, famous convince me. Uh, segments where I go and I deal with some uh, liberal students. As you know, our schools are totally overrun by uh, liberal professors and liberal teachers uh, teaching kids to be liberal without doing any critical thinking. Okay? So uh, I went down to a local school and uh, checked out one of... Uh, I got a whole series of this, but we're just going to play one clip for now, okay? Uh, do the, um, yeah, the one on the uh, global, uh, on, on uh, so-called global warming. This is pretty good. So I'm here at Leo T. Uh, Doherty Memorial Elementary School uh, with one of the typical liberals who's here, who's been indoctrinated by uh, public schools. So uh, first question for you, um, global warming. I don't believe it. I don't think it's happening. Convince me. It's the earth is getting warmer. The earth is getting warmer. That's it. That's an assertion. That's not an argument, right? So is that it? Yep. Okay. Boom. Typical liberal. Just you just say it, and that's why it's true, right? Okay. Uh, next up, um, hate speech. 
I don't think there's any for such thing as hate speech. I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is? All right. Well, I guess you didn't convince me. So that's another one for me. That's two. You got zero. So. Yeah, that that that, that kid so uh, immersed in liberal uh, ideology. He just, all he feels like he has to do is just assert the world is warmer, and so it is. And then, like, he even admits hate speech doesn't exist. He doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, I thought that was the interesting part, because you could tell that with just a little bit of access to outside freedom and whatnot, he at least can realize one liberal lie or not know what it is. Uh, pretty stunning stuff. All right, now, uh, we got to guess. But it's warmer. I mean, maybe the kid wants to get on the science gravy train. Let's um, we got to take a uh, quick break and uh, get our guest on the phone. Um, let's take a quick break and we'll get this guy. Y'all were running. What are you doing? We're going to take a quick break. Talk. This is so deep, it's a deep state. Okay, we are back. It is uh, 25 past the hour, and uh, you are on the uh, Ken, Ken, and Ken show here with the Deuce, the Scotso, uh, the Dork. And, of course, uh, Gay Brendan, who is our intern and... Um, is uh, obviously uh, not getting paid. So on the phone is uh, we have uh, a reporter from the liberal media. Uh, we hear all sides. Because we are more fair and balanced than just about any of the, the things on the left. This is something, if you're a liberal, you're watching this, you would never see this happen on your show. Uh, here is uh, Ryan Grimm from The Intercepted. Ryan Grimm, welcome to the program. Gentlemen. Uh, Ryan, let me ask you a question. Do you guys at The Intercept, you have like um, uh, uh, shows, right? Yeah, we got, we got a couple podcasts. One right. by Jeremy Scahill, another by Mehdi Hassan. Don't know those guys. Uh, we, Obviously, no, you're they're, trying they're to good. do your they're best good. with um, good. providing uh, you know, enough uh, you know, for minority representation. Good for that. But um, uh, I don't remember getting an invite on that. But that's we no, will we don't get. Yeah. Mehdi Hassan was the affirmative action hire from Britain, and he doesn't talk to conservatives. Oh, that's good. So you get, um, yeah, 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 he doesn't have. A, he's uh, from a different country, and also uh, has uh, a name that is not American. Thanks that's for fine. the affirmative action. Now I'll ignore American viewpoints on my American show. Whatever. Uh, uh, he he talks uh, he talks almost exclusively to to Trump people actually. Oh, and wow, they they, does fo he? they foolish they foolishly continue coming on on his shows. See, okay, li here's one of the problems with people like you. Okay, with all you know, look, I'm just trying to be fair. You immediately go to an ad hominem attack by saying that they're foolish. Like you think it's foolish. Let me ask you this then: Do you think it's foolish? to have a fair exchange of ideas. What I mean is that they make fools of themselves when they attempt oh, to have an exchange of ideas. I see. So you're changing your story. <laughs> now, I'm just trying to clarify it for you, Ken. Oh, I see. Okay. My name is The Deuce. It's the Ken, Ken, and no, Ken Show. my apologies. Uh, now, gotcha. uh, KKK. Ryan Grimm, listen. Uh, okay, so you like to change your stories around... Let me ask you about this one that I know you've been writing quite a bit about. Um, how come you are covering so uh, adamantly for Hunter Biden? 
We just saw a uh, report on Fox News from Donald Trump Jr. that uh, Hunter Biden got $1.5 billion from the Chinese. How many articles have you written about that? Well, it's not exactly true, but I have written a few about Hunter Biden. Oh, you have written a few about in, in, Hunter Biden in, getting $1.5 billion from the Chinese? Uh, I, I did uh, report on the, the Chinese and uh, funding of this investment fund that he got into. Actually, I am surprised you guys didn't see it because the New York Post, of all places, uh, ran a version of it. And isn't, that, that's kind of your like hometown paper, right? Oh, so you admit that Hunter Biden is really the culprit in all of this. <laughs> he's the he's the one yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I, if you guys if you guys want to say that the children of powerful politicians should not uh, be using their parents names to uh, okay. profit so this is globally, how they twist it I'm, straw yeah, man. Right this is how they you. twist it so straw you man. have someone like eric trump who obviously understands business working hard <laughs> that's a disadvantage if anything he's at a disadvantage because of his father's name and according to Ryan and other socialists, he shouldn't be allowed to work. Well, let me ask you this, Ryan. Um, how many jobs has Hunter Biden ever created? Oh, good question. Right. You know, I mean, Hunter Biden, I can give you the answer because him, since you've done so much reporting on him, you would probably know zero. Zero jobs. Do you know how many jobs, zero jobs. the Trump organization he, has he, made? Well, Biden uh, Biden fund, uh, started a lobbying firm ba, 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 uh, while his ba, ba, father was a senator. Uh, the lobbying firm certainly uh, hired a significant number of people. What, like five or six he also, people? He also, his lobbying firm also um, got a lot of earmarks uh, for clients, for, you know, while his father was serving as a senator. Uh, University of Delaware, for instance, got tens of millions of dollars and, and paid Biden's firm, you know, millions Millions okay. for that. So you agree so, yeah. that there is a uh, higher education, democratic, um, uh, industrial complex that is trying to keep conservatives out. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, that that wasn't exactly the point. Did you just not say that the University of Maryland got uh, ten million dollars to keep Ben Shapiro from speaking there? <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, University of Delaware uh, was a client of uh, Hunter Biden's law firm while okay. Joe Biden. So they was funneled the money with, with overseas to keep Ben Shapiro from speaking in Delaware. Total straw man, yes, too. The, the, I noticed. The C, the, the, the C would be the Chesapeake Bay. So, yes, they, they funneled it from Washington over the Chesapeake Bay uh, to the University of Delaware. This is okay. what you guys, why are you so, so hateful? Uh, so, uh, Ryan Grimm, let me ask you this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Ben Shapiro was born at that time. Oh, whatever. Look, uh, you have such problems with Hunter Biden, then you must obviously agree that this is all a fake sham impeachment, correct? So you have to be able to hold two thoughts in your head at the same time. So you have to be able to say what Hunter Biden, what Joe Biden did, uh, there, there's something wrong there. Like this is, this, this, this is a, a corrupt uh, you know, corrupting influence on our, our politics here. Joe I agree. Biden, therefore, uh, over, over, therefore, for, for decades, the impeachment is a sham. So the, you would ha in order to believe that Trump uh, had the legitimate concerns of the United States in his mind when he was withholding money from the Ukraine in order to pressure uh, the Ukrainian president. Uh, into making a statement on CNN that he was going to investigate. Not not investigate. He, he, I don't think he cared whether he investigated. He just wanted him to say on CNN that he was investigating. You'd have to believe that uh, President Trump you know, is a is a foe of corruption around the globe and also a foe of, of nepotism, that these are things that he has sought to root out with his presidency. You'd have to try to find another example of him Caring about corruption what? anywhere in the world. Wait a second. Lock Hold on. her up. Now, Ryan, do you hear what you're saying? Oh, that's true. That's true. He did want to. He did want to lock up uh, Hillary Clinton as he well. So, and, okay. Of course. You, you do have and two, first two off, instances. Not just did he want to lock up Hillary Clinton. He also wanted to oh, get Obama. To the, he wanted to get to the bottom Obama. of the scandal around Obama not being a citizen. 
two instances. Yeah. But do you did you this hear what you just said to me before that? You said No, I did not. Donald Trump comes out and demands anti corruption stuff from Ukraine. But I need proof that he's interested in anti corruption stuff. <laughs> That's like saying, that's like saying, I spoke to you on the telephone, but I need proof that you are on the telephone. So a lot of the witnesses who are coming forward from the National Security Council worked CIA, with the Democrats. Susan Rice, they're all, it's all there. Uh, um, uh, Peter Stroika, um, uh, his girlfriend, all of them. So what he's going to say is, oh, right. because the deep state Democrats said it, you should just repeat it. Well, well what, when are we going to hear from Valerie Jarrett? Is she going to come up and tell us uh, how Donald Trump should be impeached? Uh, so far, it's mostly people who worked for Trump who are testifying. Uh, some of them have been barred uh, from testifying, and they've been said just quit and testified anyway. Then how can we don't oh, know who they are? So wait a second. So you're saying they're disaffected? You don't read the newspaper. They're disaffected employees are testifying against him. Well, I suppose they are disaffected at this point. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. So they, um, they, they claim they claim to have witnessed the crime. So Donald Trump said, "We're draining the swamp. You need to work harder." You need to make America great again. They said, no, I want to be corrupt. I want to use government money for a sex change operation. He fired them. Now they're disaffected. Now they want to destroy him. You repeat what they say, all their lies. Ryan Grimm from the Liberal Intercept. I have a question for you. Was Joe Biden impeached? Joe Biden as vice president? Correct. Uh, no, I don't think he ever was. No, I think we are in agreement about that. Now, did you just not tell no. me that there was a quid pro quo with uh, his son, um, uh, Hunter Biden? So it, there wasn't there's no evidence that there is a quid pro quo. But for a for the for the offspring of a, of a powerful politician to be using his name to extract cash from uh, company, corrupt companies overseas. It's just wrong. Right. Like, it just shouldn't, Is there it shouldn't any be done. Evidence Joe Biden should that have Donald Trump it. Jr. That did that. Donald Trump Jr.? Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they the, the Trump organization uh, broadly is Ex- excuse a global me. money laundering scheme. Excuse me. Scheme. Why do you keep changing the, the question? I said, is there any evidence that Donald Trump Jr. did that? The evidence that Donald Trump Jr. has used his last name in order to uh, profit is the fact that he has any money whatsoever. Have, have you seen that guy uh, try to uh, speak in coherent sentences? Uh, yeah, I have, actually, and I've seen him do it at uh, many uh, Turning Points USA uh, events. <laughs> right. So you can imagine how surprising it would be to somebody who came into contact with a person like Don Trump Jr. and then learned that he was wealthy. You, you would wonder what kind of uh, merit had led to, uh, to that accumulation of wealth. And then when you were told, oh, well, his, his father inherited a lot of money from his father and, and they I've haven't managed to lose I've never seen anybody who really just spouts um, a fake talking points better than you. Let me ask you this question, uh, Ryan. I appreciate Green. that. Since you are... Uh, so in love with um, all the the so-called squad, uh, basically the um, the a coalition of the I Hate America caucus in the Democratic Party. Right. Um, the hateful what did you, four. What did you think about uh, this? Uh, let's let's pull up this clip from um, your your God, your Messiah, Barack Obama, basically telling people like you that maybe you should be a little bit less woke and a little bit more about freedom of speech. Here it is. And you're never gonna, you know, this this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff, you should get over that quickly. The world world is messy. There are ambiguities. People who do really good stuff have flaws. People who you are fighting may love their kids. And, you know, share certain things with you. And, and, and I think that 
One danger I see among young people, particularly on college campuses, Malia and I talk about this. Yara goes to school with my daughter. Um, but I do get a sense sometimes now among certain young people, and this is accelerated by social media, there is this sense sometimes of the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. And that's enough. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or used the word wrong verb or then I can sit back and okay, feel pretty uh, good about myself. Okay, we get it, all right? It's impossible to listen to this guy without a teleprompter because he just <laughs> the stutters and this and that. But how is it that uh, Barack Obama learned this in Kenya and you can't even learn it in Washington, D.C.? Uh, that was a pretty classic uh, Obama riff. Um, and I guess we can, all, we can thank him for the, another lecture. Uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Oh, so you're you 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 are basically saying that like the polarizer in chief is not polarizing enough, and you're you want to polarize even more. Yeah, we might as well. I mean, I, I I'm I'm sure there are a handful of people there who uh, are a little bit uh, obnoxious or unrealistic in their way that they present their views on Twitter. Uh, but I I don't see how uh, that necessarily needs to be the thing that that the former president of the United States needs to needs to take Do you on. You see what these guys are like. So Barack Obama, Muslim trained president terrorist, tiptoes an inch off of the Democratic Party plantation. Yep. And now liberal lying and I'm sorry Ryan, I consider you a friend. Liberal, lying, dishonest, unpatriotic, Ryan Grimm attacks him personally. It's pretty amazing. Uh, it's just like, I think <laughs> one of the things that's clear that's happening out there, Ryan, and I think maybe you can't see it because you're so caught up in your fake news, is that uh, everybody is on board this. It is now uh, Barack Obama is a member of the IDW now, uh, which is the intellectual dark web, because you're not allowed to say what he said. In that uh, environment, that's why you're attacking him so viciously, right? I I guess so. So Barack Obama is going to be canceled, right? Well, I mean, you're the one who's attacking him, basically saying he doesn't have a right to say that. Look, Barack Obama can say whatever he wants. Um, oh, now I think you're backing off. Do you lecture. change your story like this all the time? Gay guy says what? Barack Obama, the last time he was out uh, publicly speaking, he was taking credit for the surge in uh, fossil fuel production in the United States under his under his leadership. So, may, you know, maybe he's not the one that should be giving it. Well, advice maybe he has to change the subject because uh, Donald Trump had to get rid of ISIS. So um, anyways. Uh, yeah. oh, wait, 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 though. I, Serious question, though, on ISIS, which Donald Trump destroyed, and I'm sure Ryan has never thanked him on. Ryan, you're gay. Those people hate you. Why don't you support President Trump in defeating them? I mean, I, I oppose ISIS. And, and ICE, for that matter. So, in other words, oh, wow. you, you try and create a straw man, right? So you're, you're, you're making a moral equivalence between a organization that is dedicated to killing your whole family and chopping off their heads and law uh, enforcement agencies in this country. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm saying that I'd abolish both of them. I'm not saying that they're equivalent. Oh, but you brought them up at the same time, right? (laughs) <laughs> okay. Uh, there you well, go. This has been uh, great. Uh, it is always good to expose our audience to the hypocrisy, fake news, total uh, straw man, ad hominem arguments, not from logic that uh, folks like you present. So thank you for coming on. You argue from emotion, but you pleasure. have the last word. Yeah, you can have the last word if you want, because I know how emotional uh, you on the left get if you don't. So, um, so you have the last word. Why are you so angry? 
Oh no, I'm good. You guys, uh, you guys can take it away. Oh wow! Oh. Look, the kid wants to take his ball and go home. <laughs> right, exactly. Ryan Grimm. <laughs> so typical. So typical. We give you an opportunity to speak, and you just um, think you're so great because you uh, East Coast uh, elite. So uh, enjoy your coast. Beta. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Right. That guy really uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I hope he enjoys the coffee shop to recover. Uh, this is pretty but you serious. See how sensitive they are to just one exchange of ideas. It's unbelievable. Part of the fake news. Speaking of which, on the fake news, um, this is big. So uh, here you have right here. Okay, yeah, blow that up. This is uh, the debunking of the Flate Gate. Uh, as you know, Tom Brady, the world's greatest. Um, quarterback that has ever lived and probably one of the best human individuals in the world was uh, forced to in some way disavow the greatest president we've ever had in this country just want to remind everybody we know who we voted for even though he is his uh, right to self-expression has been um, uh, oppressed here is from 2011 to 2014, number of fumbles that the Patriots had, 65. Then, as you know, there was the fake, de- de- what I call fake deflate gate or the fake gate. And this was the uh, scurrilous reports that Tom Brady one of the men with the greatest integrity in America, uh, purposely let air out of the football so that he wouldn't fumble it as much. Okay? Well, let's look at 2015 to 2018. How many fumbles? Exactly the same amount. 65. 64. So, actually, uh, there were less supposedly after the time that the ball was more inflated. Boom. We put that one to bed, too. All right. Let's go. uh, Yeah, exactly. Uh, Let's go through some more of this. We, um, what else we got here? Let's see. Um, Oh, this is horrific. As you know, the Democrats will never stop until they break every person that they can. You have a lot of uh, people who want to serve on the uh, bench of the judiciary and uh, Democrats, they can't get over their loss in 2016. They're still crying about Hillary Clinton. And so what they have to do is they have to try and humiliate anybody who works. This is the story of a a man who is up for, uh, his name is Lawrence Van Dyke. He is a lawyer. And uh, apparently the liberal ABA, whatever that is, apparently it's the, uh, they think that they are the ones who can actually rate lawyers, uh, had this to say. And uh, Josh Hawley is asking him, and uh, this is just, I hate to see a good man um, destroyed in this way. The letter also says that you would not commit... Uh, to being fair to litigants before you, notably members of the LGBTQ community. Can you speak to that? Did you, did you say that you wouldn't be fair to members of the LGBT community? Senator, I, that, was, um, that was the part of the letter. I did not say that. (laughs) I apologize. It's all right. I'm sorry. No, I did not say that. I do not believe that. It is a fundamental belief of mine that 
all people are created in the image of God. And they should all be treated with dignity and respect. Senator. Can you commit to, today to, to this committee that you will treat, if, if confirmed, that you would treat every litigant who, who came before you with respect and with dignity? Absolutely, Senator. I would not have allowed myself to be nominated for this position if I did not think I could do that. Including members of the LGBT community and, and any other community that has been historically disadvantaged in this country? Absolutely, Senator. Wow, that was so horrible. They made him sound like Gay Brendan. It's just unbelievable. Uh, this so-called American Bar Association. First of all, why is a bar association making any type of judgments about uh, who can be a judge? That's exactly what Obama was talking about. And and Purity. the guy said he is God fearing. Okay, people like that would never be prejudiced against the gays. So. Uh, and the first the, people to say that gay people should be treated like they're sort of human and whatnot. It's not just that. The problem is that they, the thing is, is the liberals in this bar association, maybe they're drunk. They think that just because he judges what they do as being sinful and that they're doing uh, the absolute wrong thing that God meant them to do in any circumstance, and it's an abomination that they're doing that, and it's gross, that he can't fairly judge whether they should have the same rights as normal people. I love you as a person. You're gross and disgusting and basically the same as a pedophile. Now let's hear the case. Right. What's the so guy- hard about people figuring that out? The guy is trying to be like God who happens to think that they're bad or what they're doing is bad. So uh, it's pretty nuts, I have to say. And, of course, the ABA, because they are a liberal bar, they basically just said the guy doesn't have the competence as a lawyer, which, of course, is just, you know, classic that's all that they do they Um, want him to appear in a gay porno here is the only way he could prove it now as we know uh we have a situation now where and we'll take some phone calls in a second you can call in at 646-257-3920 uh it is now 45 past the hour excuse me 52 past the hour you're listening to the ken 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 show We are live from the Jenny Craig Studios in uh, Stoughton, Mass, downtown Stoughton, Mass. And uh, here is, uh, let's listen to Ambassador Rice, Susan Rice. This is the lady who apparently the whistleblower knew and worked with at different times during the, are you ready for this? So they are doing a whole impeachment hearing based around a whistleblower complaint from someone who was basically Susan Rice's lover. Pretty much. And let's hear what this level-headed lady has to say about one of our U.S. senators. Yeah. Understand Benghazi to understand Trump. Right, because Lindsey Graham isn't just a piece of shit now. He's been a piece of shit. Lindsey Graham. I said it. I said it. Damn it. Finally. He was. He's a piece of shit. He's lying, 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 and raising money off of the death of four Americans. So anyway, that's my little. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's really appropriate. Yeah. Whatever happened to the idea of civility and decorum? They're just so filled. With hatred. There's so much tolerance that uh, Democrats have, right? So much tolerance unless unless you say something slightly different about something. I prefer maybe you raise money off of why did Hillary Clinton order four Americans dead than, order, than raising money off of killing those four Americans. But that's just me. Uh, speaking of a... Um, a real American. This is the only rap that I think I like. 
Here it is. Uh, this is by um, uh, this who's is sweet. this dude? Little Trump. This is so sweet. Here we go. Little Trump. All these Democrats out there are trying to impeach the president. Well, I got a message for them. Impeach these nuts. Impeach these nuts. Impeach these nuts. Live, live. Impeach these nuts. Impeach these nuts. Impeach these nuts. Impeach these nuts. Live. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Adam Schiff, no. I don't give a fuck about the CIA, swag. Every single one of them is a bitch, bitch. I be grilling burgers like Bobby Flay. Burger. Bitch and Lil' Trump, the illest on the mic. Michelle Obama's a tranny, she's a total guy. Fake news is a joke, man, they always tell them lies. Impeachment is a joke, yeah, sad to see him try. They're so fucking mad, cause Fletcher was a hoax. Rocking a MAGA hat while I'm slaying MAGA hoes. You know in 2020, I'm fucking voting Trump. And all you Democrats can impeach. It's true. We're Impeach working these. on a collabo together. Uh, let's take a, a that phone song call. is so awesome. You're calling from a two eight one area code. Uh, who's this? Where are you calling from? You're on the Ken Kenny Ken show. Hi Ken, this is uh, Robert from Houston, Texas. It's um, the Deuce. I'm a liberal college student in uh, at oh, College Station, Texas. Yeah. A&M. Well, why don't you impeach these nuts, Lib? <laughs> Well, I wanted to talk about a fellow conservative of yours, uh, Stephen Crowder. Uh, uh, the crowd is be, the greatest. Uh, yeah, he's going to be having a Halloween spooktober at my uh, college, and I wanted to know if there's any good questions I could ask him. Yeah, how is he so great? How you should so go great? and try and do, I mean, listen, it is the, the case that uh, Stephen Crowder found his uh, change my mind thing based upon our convince me segment that we would do. Uh, but that's OK. Um, he does. He decides to go to uh, college students. We do mostly elementary school or junior high kids. Uh, but nevertheless, same teachers. So they have the same answers. So uh, good luck and try and. Uh, deal with that what school are you at texas a&m and how do you know that he's coming there did they give you advance warning um i'm a political science major and in one of my class group chats someone asked is anyone going to the crowder event and that set me off and when is that happening but it's 7 p.m tonight Darn it uh, cause I would love to catch one of those. Maybe engage in it. Um, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I've heard that like libs like yourself like to taunt, uh, Steven Crowder by saying something like, uh, why do you have cold feet? You've had multiple conservatives who call out and have said, including Scaramucci, uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, Kevin Sorbo, Tommy Lauren, the uh, mom from ET, uh, Ben Ferguson have all called for you publicly to debate Sam Sita, whoever that gay guy is, and uh, you should, you should, um, you, you should maybe bring big, that up. You so, talk a big game for someone who can't debate a guy that looks like Rachel Maddow. Right. Those are one. what those are what libs usually do. So, thanks for the call. Lib tips from KKK. He got scared. I think he just hung up on us. It's a Hold shame on. they bring Crowder's family into it. It's unbelievable. Call him from an 818 area code. Where are you calling from? You're on the Ken, Ken, and Ken show. Hey, guys. This is Amir from uh, Long Beach, California. Okay. Do you guys, do you guys take uh, calls from bad Jews, according to Capo Shapiro? I, I don't know what you're talking about. But go ahead. Obviously, well, liberal I am a bad. Yeah, well, I am a bad Jew, according to Kapu Shapiro. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know him. Well, I mean, um, if you're talking regardless. about Ben Shapiro, he's a great American. Well, I know you guys think that, but uh, whatever. So listen, you guys were talking religion. So here's, that, here's what I think 
the worst thing about religion is um, the fact that they basically sell you um, values with no warranty. You know, we live in America. This call's Every, lame. Well, this call yeah, sucks, dude. All right, Hang all right, up. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Hit the eject uh, listen, button. Um, listen, you know, classic uh, liberal straw man argument, argumenting from uh, ad finitum, and so uh, we're hanging up on you. I don't like it. Uh, let's go to this call. You calling from a 617 or uh, uh, who's this? 509. Good afternoon, Ken. This is Anthony from San Juan. Anthony from San Juan. Okay. I called this show on March 2nd, 2016, shortly after the inauguration and predicted that Nancy Bitch Losey and the demo cucks would move to impeach Trump. We had an argument about that, and you said that they didn't have the balls to confront Trump, especially since he just won an overwhelming and historic election where he took nearly all the electoral college and over 95% of the popular vote. But once again, time has proven me to be right. Uh, who's keeping score? Um, it's okay. But speaking of impeachment, there was some hubbub several weeks ago when a Fox News poll showed 51% of Americans support impeachment but as I'm always saying on this show, you can't just look at the poll. You have to look at the methodology behind it. And according to a very repu reputable 8chan user, the Fox poll sampled only 10 people, and they were all never Trump or Democrats. And a lot of libtards like to go around saying, look at the aggregate polling, but if you're aggregating 10 crap polls, you'll end up with a crap poll. It's pretty much obvious. Right. Anyways, I've been seeing a, a lot of really good, reliable polling from the Blaze.com recently. And I think they're kind of inherently reliable, given how much I agree with the results of the poll, which is kind of one of the main factors you want to look at, is whether or not you agree with the outcome. So here's an interesting poll from two weeks ago. It shows that 87% of Americans, for them, their number one political concern is finding the DNC server, which I think we all know where that is. No surprise there that the, we, we want to thank the patriots and our government, along with America's mayor, for doing uh, whatever it takes to find it. For uh, another 10% poll, their primary concern was Benghazi, and God bless those good Americans are still wanting to get to the bottom of that because we know that Hillary lied and four Americans died. And for the other 3%, their primary concern was seeking justice for the crimes of Jesse Smollett. And uh, I, I think that's a good concern, too. Uh, you know, we all know that racism isn't real and that that's ground, kind of ground zero for that whole thing. Yeah. Finally, finally, I wanted to get your thoughts on Jane Sanders. You know, Bernie's been doing really well in all the polls that you can't trust. But according to an article on PatriotUnderground.biz, Jane Sanders spent the last 30 years working as a highly powerful madame in a pedophilia ring operated out of the basement of the Student Union Building at the Burlington Community College campus. And I, I just think... Uh, my uh, understanding is that's been totally I, verified, so... No, that's been uh, reported, I, and you know you won't hear that anywhere in the mainstream media. Jane's work as a madame in the whole community college network. Uh, you won't hear it on MS Bernie uh, D S C. Oh, he hung up on us. All right, good, uh, good caller, call back. That was a good one. Uh, Here's something that um, is absolutely true. Um, you know, look, everybody knows this, and the thing that I love about uh, some of the guys from the Daily Wire is that they have the uh, cojones to say out loud what you're not allowed to say anymore. In fact, I probably bet these guys had to go into the witness uh, protection program because they were saying what everybody knows. Girls aren't funny, or when they are, they're like guys. 
a it's wonderful thing that, that you does. say that comedy is inherently masculine because it is true. And Norm Macdonald makes this great observation that uh, whenever you were a kid and you'd hear a group of kids laughing and you'd run over there, it would never, he says, it'd never be a broad standing in the <laughs> middle of the, and it's true because men, and when you think about the funniest women, Sarah Silverman, who is legitimately hilarious, especially in her early career, but she was emulating a man. Mm -hmm. Totally. What she was Roseanne doing, Barr. Same Roseanne Barr was totally. emulating. Shock, dirty humor. It's, yeah. not, it's yeah. not that no woman is funny. It's not that, yeah. Of course it's not that Christopher no Christopher Hitchens has a theory on this. Yes, we'll exactly. no, yeah, of course yeah. it's not that no woman is funny. It's that, it's that humor is inherently masculine. Right. Listen, mm -hmm. there are plenty of things that are inherently feminine and men can do them. Well, also that's, because, not, that's not the question. Because men purport to be invulnerable and then humor is about vulnerability, which that's is yes. why my wife laughs her ass off every time I clock my head on the stove. Whereas <laughs> if she clocked her head on the stove, I wouldn't laugh for a you second. I'd be like, are you okay? That's a great example. That's a great example. A it's wonderful thing that you Yeah, those, uh, I mean, that's brilliant stuff. Uh, I mean, look, sure, it'd be really knows, funny to watch Ben fall on a stuff. Whenever, like, a girl is supposedly funny, it's because they're telling a joke like a guy would. But and it's difficult because, I mean, even when they do it well, like Sarah Silverman, you got at least a week of the month where then brains are not even able to pretend to be masculine. I, have you guys seen uh, Ben Shapiro's? Uh, Three Stooges reboot. He's really working in the tradition of physical humor, clocking his head on the stove and all that. Okay, Brendan, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> all I could say is, homo says what? Uh, let's go and uh, check in with uh, the uh, Obamas, who apparently uh, are uh, have a problem with white people unless they live on Martha's Vineyard, and then they're fine, apparently. Here is uh, a Michelle Obama, and uh, she just, I don't know, is she talking? Well, let's listen. Period, as I write, uh, called white flight. Yeah. That is families like ours, upstanding families like ours, you know, who were doing everything we were supposed to do and better. Um, as we moved in, uh, white folks moved out because they were afraid of what our families represented. And I always stop there when I talk about this out, out in the world because, you know, I want to remind white folks that y'all were running, running from us, <laughs> you know, because... This family. This family. Yeah. <laughs> this family, <laughs> with all the values that you read about, yeah. you were running from us. And you're still running <laughs> because we're no different than the immigrant families that are moving in, the families in Pilsen, the, the, the families that are coming from other places to try to do better. But because we can so easily wash over who we really were because of the color of our skin, you know, because of the, the texture of our hair, you know, that's what divides countries. Artificially as well. Artificial things that don't even touch on the values that people bring to life. And so, yeah, I felt, I feel a sense of injustice. And you know this when you're young, you know people are running from you, you know? And you can see it, you can see it all of a sudden, because we, we grew up with friends of all races. When we first moved in, Rachel Dempsey and Susan Yacker and I, you know, you had friends of all races, we played together. There were no gang fights, there were no territorial battles. But yet, one by one, they packed their bags and they ran from us. And they left communities in shambles. Uh, they just bought like a $15 million house on Martha's Vineyard, right? And uh, I don't see people running from there. They She's lecturing us. People. It's unbelievable. Uh, what next? We got to eat our carrots. How about not force feeding people the food that you want them to eat in school? And uh, then maybe they won't run from you. Right? I mean, if you're trying to force feed me, of course I'm going to run. That's Michelle the thing. She Obama's doesn't say a family. word about that. She doesn't say about how we moved into the neighborhood and forced everybody to eat specific foods for lunch. We went across the, the entirety of the south side of Chicago forcing white people to eat carrots. Of course we left. Unbelievable. Uh, let's do a little bit of debunking. Um, we have gotten a new tape of Donald Trump at the World Series, the Nationals game, the fifth game of the series, where everybody reported that he was booed. Okay, I want you to listen to this tape. We have increased the volume on it. You're going to be able to hear it better now. It's clear that what they're saying is, ooh, 
It's the president. Go ahead. It's the Marines. They're cheering the Marines because this is America. And then it switches quickly to the president. And everybody's like, ooh, oh my God, oh my God, ooh. They're excited. Ooh, look at that. Oh my God, it's the president. Yeah, I mean, the fake news would have you believe that he is in a stadium booed by people when it's quite clear from the audio they're saying, ooh. They're saying, ooh, they're so excited. They're at a ball game, and the greatest president in American history just came. Ooh. I mean, what, what other noise do you make when you're surprised? Let's take another phone call. I call him from a 313 area code. Who's this? Hey, 313? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, this is Danny from Detroit, proud UAW member. Oh, and, uh, oh. what? Yeah, calling it. Yeah, I'm calling to figure out because uh, your friend Ben Shapiro and your organization, the uh, Wall Street Journal, said that Donald Trump is too inept to be able to pull off any type of crime, which was kind of the same excuse that they used to say for George W. Bush. First of all, so my question is why first of all, how to- dare you? How <laughs> dare you? And I got nothing besides that. Disgusting. <laughs> Did you have another question? But, uh, yeah, we, uh, the, my, uh, the Liberal Party would like to know why you guys get to get away with uh, the stupid excuse. The st- oh, my God. Um, uh, hey, excuse me. How about you go get a job? Go back well, to work. We're back on our job. Oh, there. he's at All the UAW. He's probably got a 10-hour lunch break to make up lies about the president <laughs> that's protecting our border. You and your family are leeches. Ben Shapiro himself said that he hits his head regularly when he's cooking dinner for his wife because he has a short tall. stature. And so that damaged his brain, so occasionally he has a bad take. He's also a Jew. Which is, you know, which, a problem. Which is fine, I guess. All right. I love all humans, but it's sort of like gay. It's not normal. Um, here is evidence of the only Democrat who's worth anything except for that hot Kristen Cinema, And uh, this Jesus is Christ, uh, Senator Joe Cinema. Manchin. Here we go. That's, uh, the Bernie sure. Sanders thing. Um, would you support his agenda? Uh, absolutely not. And Bernie and I have had many conversations. I think that Bernie brings a lot to the table. It makes you think a little bit kind of uh, gets, to, gets the blood going and stirring and everything, but it's not practical where I come from. Uh, Bernie keeps saying Medicare for all. I said, Bernie, we can't even pay for Medicare for some. I says, right now the trust fund's gonna go broken by 2026, and these are people that paid into it and earned it. Now you wanna expand it, what happens? So it doesn't make sense at all. What if he were your nominee for president and it's him versus Donald Trump? Who do you vote for? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be Bernie. All right, so it would be the president, unless you leave it blank. It wouldn't be Bernie. Would it be Donald Trump? Uh, let's just say I, I'm going to make decisions based on what's best for my country and my okay. state. There you go. Uh, there is a man of uh, real integrity. Now they're going to try to destroy him. And it's funny because we have a lot of respect. for. I mean, he's a liberal. He's way to the far left, but he's willing to respect his country and recognize i mean at least from west virginia we're probably not ready for a old jew president and also people forget this about mansion in terms of how left he is but when he fired that um ar-15 in his uh, ad he was not even doing it at a living thing no. He was shooting just a cap and trade bill. He was out a piece of paper because he's a soft. Because he's so liberal that he's afraid to shoot something that's alive. Uh, let's look at this video. Sometimes when you're dealing with the fake impeachment and all of the, you know, Colin Kaepernick's out there and uh, the 
Charles Barkley and the Jesse Smalls and uh, Jesse Smollett, who won't Ma- even get charged with a crime. Won't even get charged even with a crime. Even though his fake hate crime for fake racism cost the city of Chicago five billion dollars. You don't hear the teachers talk about that. The, when the, they're asking for a longer well, lunch they taught break. him. The Obamas and like the Ayanna Presleys and the uh, Ilhan Omar. Ilhad Omar. And you have all those people. Who, Why are the Chicago's teachers striking? What do they want? Longer lunch? Yeah, no kidding. What's the difference? Well, here's the point. All those people are trying to divide America. Let's just take a clip from some people who are trying to bring America together with uh, a good Christian message of Christmas that includes everybody. Look, I don't care. I've said this many times. I don't care if you are black. I don't care if you are Puerto Rican. I don't care if you are white. I don't care if you are Chinese or if you come from India, or wherever. Because underneath, we're all Americans. So here is this. Day in the life of Vice President Pence, and then he gave us a tour of the nation's capital. So now the so-called BOTUS, the bunny of the United States, the bunny of the United States, I love it, is back for Christmas. In Marlon Bundo's best Christmas ever, the Pence family's pet rabbit is on a quest to find true Christmas joy. And here to tell us more is second lady and illustrator Karen Pence and her daughter and author of the book, Charlotte Pence. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Congratulations. Book number three. Thanks. (laughs) Tell us about it. Yeah, um, well, this book was kind of actually, I think we came up with this idea before the idea for the last one, but um, obviously we wanted to come out around Christmas time. I remember the last time you were here, you said you were working on the Christmas book. we wanted to do a Christmas book. So, um, yeah, we wanted to kind of make a book that showed um, what goes on at the vice president's residence during Christmas, but also kind of helps people to just um, be able to relate to the idea of you know, coming around loved ones during Christmas time and that being more important than gifts and, and mm-hmm. getting expensive things. That's great. So, yeah. And it's about Christmas. It's about Hanukkah. What is so mm-hmm. special about your oh, bun? This was your bun you got now, your freshman You know, this year. is the thing that's really uh, disgusting. Why do they have to ruin it by saying Hanukkah? Look, don't Who get me cares? wrong. I think Israel has the, a right to protect what itself from Arabs. What percentage of people even celebrate that holiday? Even Fox News feels a need to bend over, pull off their shorts, and take it from liberalism in this country. It's unbelievable. Support independent media. Support independent media, because that's really the only way you're going to get a pure Christmas greeting. And, you know, besides us and President Trump, look, Israel has a right to defend itself from Arabs, but it doesn't mean we need to hear about Hanukkah all the time. No, it's unbelievable. Like, we're inundated, even in a story about the best Christmas ever. They have to bring up Hanukkah. Why does everything that's good have to be ruined? Because of uh, political correctness. That's why. All right, let's listen to the first mother and the first daughter. You know, coming around loved ones during Christmas time and that being more important than gifts and, and mm-hmm. getting expensive things. That's great. Yeah. And it's about Christmas. It's about Hanukkah. Oh. What is so special? about your bun this was your bunny you got your freshman year of yes. college right mm-hmm. so your yeah. bunny is seven years old now yeah. doing well yeah. what's so special about Mar- marlon bundo yeah. you know i think marlon just brings people together he's so sweet uh, throughout the book charlotte has him going to all these different people who work at the vice president's residence and kind of bringing everybody together he takes little pieces and he comes up with a surprise that he has at the end of the book and oh. uh, he takes little pieces like from the manger scene something from the uh the menorah for hanukkah Ugh. and a little bit of honey from the beehive and he does all these little things and makes something that's kind of a surprise at the end mm-hmm. and all the illustrations are your works yep. right had a lot of fun doing the illustration yeah. i'm sure and what's it like to write a children's book mm. um it's all a right. lot of fun uh, i mean this uh, is uh, I, I, that story is so beautiful about the bunny and I, I want to remind everybody, the Obamas didn't have a bunny. They probably would have eaten it, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Don't bring Rashida Leslib 
to the White House for reach out. She'll probably eat the bunny before she bombs the place. But it's a it's a nice message of like we're all Americans and whatnot. We need to come together. All right, uh, let's take one more phone call and then we'll get out of here. I guess right. Let's go. Uh, you calling from a? Definitely, I have to scalp some tickets at Fenway. Six zero eight area code. What are you going to scalp tickets? Hi, man. Yeah, who's this? Oh my gosh! Hi, so I'm Chloe from Madison. Who is it? Wisconsin. Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. Okay. From uh, liberal I'm Madison, sorry. how is it living there amongst all those liberals? Um, pretty decent. Um, could be a little bit better, a little bit more left if I had my choice. Oh, that's gross. But go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. How could they be um, more left than Madison? Do you want to live in Tehran, sweetheart? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, so you love our enemies. What Raising else can a you dog to eat for the Ramadan fast, like the Obamas. <laughs> so I had a question for you. Um, okay. Do you think that there's any salience in explaining the... I guess like the need for universal health care and just more like specific examples of how stupid our system is now. Um, are you aware that we have the greatest health care in the world? That uh, princes and kings and queens come here to get their health care instead of doing it in their other countries? Um, well, so I guess like uh, 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 I got liberal. nothing. I don't have an answer. And, the uh, friggin' prince of Saudi Arabia is here at the, the friggin' clinics because we got laser imaging and whatnot, but they want to destroy it so people can visit the doctor 10 times a day and you pay for it. Hey, guys, uh, don't forget, you can become a member of the Cup Club. You, uh, you simply go to cupclub.com. Sign up, and uh, then you can uh, drink during the show with a cup. So there it is. That's there pretty cool is. stuff. And then uh, sometimes you can smoke a cigar. Fire off a rifle. Cigar Friday. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we got anything left? No? I think we're done. Uh, this has been the Ken Kenny Ken Show. See you tomorrow. <laughs>